morning, everybody. It's a blessing and a privilege to uh, be with you all once again. We are so thankful to God for this another day that uh, he has provided for us. Aren't you, aren't you just amazed by his grace? I know I am. I, I'm just, I just, just stay amazed by the grace of God. And uh, uh, what I do know is that I honestly deserve to be, no, no, no. He treats me better than I deserve to be treated. He really treats us better than we deserve to be treated. So we're grateful, uh, thankful for this morning. We know, again, it's our time of prayer and also our time of a study of the Word of God. Here's what I need you all to do before we even get started today. If you are at a computer, of course, you're going to use your computer and you're going to type in what you need to type. Everybody else, I need us to at least be available with a pen, pencil, and some paper because I want to write, I want you to write some things down. Um, that I think are going to be, that, that I want you to remember, if you will, and the best way to do it is to write it down. Uh, so we'll talk about that as we, uh, as we go through our lesson for today. So if you can, uh, before we uh, start our prayer time, get you some pen, pad, and, um, and be available uh, for the time, have it available for the time we get ready to start our, uh, our Bible study. We want to be praying for uh, our own Aunt May. Wyatt, Mary Wyatt, we call her Aunt May affectionately, uh, Aunt May ex experienced a couple of aneurysms, but they didn't get to her brain, uh, but thank God the, uh, the doctors are doing their tests and their studies to determine uh, whether surgery is going to be in the vein for her, uh, but we're going to pray again miraculously that God would heal her uh, because we know he does have that kind of power. Uh, we also ask that you would be praying for Chantel Dunham's father. His name is James Brown. He's in Austin, Texas. Uh, has two arteries that are 100% blocked. Uh, so um, uh, Chantel is just waiting uh, to um, get the, uh, the word. We're going to be praying again for God's healing in his life. And uh, the hope is that if she does, if you do have to do surgery, she's going to have to go and, uh, and see about her dad. So we'll remember Chantel and her father's name, Mr. James Brown. We want to remember them in our prayers. And also we want to pray for Hope and her family. Her brother, her youngest brother, Henry Eldridge, uh, passed away. Again, remember her brother. Her dad's name is Henry, but it's her brother who died. And his funeral service is going to be next Tuesday, next Thursday, I'm sorry, on the 18th. Uh, next Thursday on the 18th, and we'll give you further directions on that. So we do know how we have some members of our congregation who are going through uh, their seasons of difficulty and, and disease and sickness and even death, and so we want to uh, be lifting them up in prayer. So would you um, lift your heart, if you will, if you want to lift your hand, wherever you are, if you want to do that, you can. But let's lift our hearts to God and just uh, focus on him, concentrate on him, uh, and uh, uh, just think about what he he, uh, he wants to uh, hear us, uh, what he wants to hear us say to him. Father, uh, we stretch our hands to you. Uh, no other help we know. If you would draw yourself from us, whether shall we go? We ask the question, what did your only son endure before he drew his breath? Because we recognize, God, if it's not for you, if it's not for the life that was given to us by your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we would not have the grace, we would not experience the favor, we would not be able just to have the recognition again of your power, your presence, your provision uh, in our lives as we do. So we thank you, God, for Jesus. Thank you for your son. Thank you for the greatest gift that could ever be given to humanity. He, he died a sinless death so that sinners like us could live not only live, but to have life more abundantly, to live a rich life, uh, to live a prosperous life, to live a joyous life that only comes through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit uh, who lives in us, who abides in us, who is at home in us. Thank you so much for that awesome and great reality. And so, God, as we uh, stand before you this day, we do so with reverence, we do so with respect acknowledge in our own sins and the sins of others and we ask Lord that you would forgive us of our sins knowing again that you are faithful and just to forgive us so we confess them before you and admit again that we have not done everything as you said uh, we've not uh, taken our thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ as we always should have uh, we have not always used the proper words 
that you would have us to use. So, Father, thank you for this chance to know that we can be forgiven for all that we do that is unlike you and unlike your son. So in light of where we are today, we certainly want to lift before you James Brown, who is the father of Chantel Dunham. Uh, the arteries of his body are clogged, too. Arteries are blocked. God, we know right now you have the power to heal him. You have the power to clear out those arteries. And God, we're going to ask you in the name of Jesus to do that very thing, to clear them out, that the doctors wouldn't even have to do surgery. They wouldn't have to use medicine. It wouldn't even be necessary. But God, in the event that surgery is necessary, we pray that the surgery is successful. We pray that the doctors, those again who are responsible for his care, uh, will do that with a fervor and an excellence uh, that is for his well-being. We pray God again for our own our, our sister one who we love dearly, Aunt May God you've allowed these things, these trials that she is going through in life just as a result of, uh, of age. God you said in your word in Psalm 90 uh, the, 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 the years of our days are 70 years and by reason of strength it may be four score years but you said yet their boast is labor and sorrow and so here she is 88 89 years old and we know that the difficulties of life can life can be challenging at this point in her life but god we know you got all power we know you can do all things and so we would ask in the name of jesus that you would heal aunt may's body because we know you have the power to do it then we pray for Hope and her family. We pray for her dad, uh, Reverend Henry Eldridge, God, who is dealing with dementia. Uh, but still, every time he hears Jesus, he uh, gets excited. Every time he hears the scriptures read, he can say amen. Lord, not aware, possibly, that his, his baby son has died. But God, we know, uh, ultimately, you're in control of it all. And I ask again that you would grant peace to that family. Help them to know again that they're not alone, that there's a church family, the other church families that are going through this process with them. Give them comfort as only you're able to do uh, in the midst of all that you do. And then, Lord, for all the hurt and pain, even all over the world, uh, the issues of COVID-19, the issues of the protests, uh, just the issues of the daily problems that people face, we ask again that you would always help us to always look to you as the source of our strength, the source of our help, that you able, Lord, to supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And for that, we are most thankful to you. Uh, once again, here we are on this day as we have gathered many, many years to study your word. We pray, God, that you would open our hearts and our minds and help us to see what you are saying in your word and to take what you say seriously as we study your word, to do it in a way that really brings praise and glory and honor to you. So thank you, Father, for this opportunity. Thank you for this privilege. Thank you for a chance again just to be able to communicate with you on this level. I pray that you will be with us now as we study your word. We ask this in Christ's name and his name alone we pray. Amen. 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 I'm going to ask you to do this. Uh, go with me again to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. That was the message uh, from last Sunday, uh, but the, the Lord is just leading me to uh, have us to do a review, if you would, of that lesson, to, uh, uh, to look at it in its, in its, in its um, immediate context as Paul uh, writes to the church, but also uh, to help us to see the relevant context to us today. And, and to help us to see that based upon the timeless principles of the word of God, the timeless truth of the word of God, those things that we need in order to be able uh, to respond to the, uh, the major issues uh, that are going around right now. In particular, what we're talking about, the whole thing that has gone on with uh, the, the desire for reform, the desire for reconciliation, uh, those things that have transpired as a result of the death of uh, George George Floyd, and we know we're hearing it uh, right now. A lot of reforms are taking place. There are some places where they are literally uh, wanting to um, completely uh, disband, if you will, the um, police department and start renewing everything. And and you know, uh, everywhere everybody has the, the decision to make in terms of how they're going to do it. Uh, but for us, as the people of God. 
uh, God has given us a process. God has given us his word uh, in terms of how we go about this issue, what we call of, of reconciliation. If you call, remember on Sunday when we, uh, when we talked about uh, this issue and just basically looking at some um, definitions, if you of the word reconciliation, uh, reconciliation, uh, or if you were to be reconciled uh, on the human level, is to cause a person to accept or be resigned to something not desired. Uh, we know, again, what we're saying, we're hearing a lot about reconciliation, that there are people who have uh, demonstrated a certain penchant toward people of color. There are people who have um, uh, determined one race is better than another. Um, in light of the fact that God would actually say to us, uh, when we look at the book of Acts chapter, chapter 17, verse 26, the word of God reminds us that we all come from one blood. And so therefore, it, it, uh, the whole issue of what we call racism, as we refer to it, is an issue of, of not really of skin, someone would say, but it's really an issue of sin. Uh, and, and if all of us be true to ourselves, all of us be true to God about ourselves, we all can, can admit there can be a, a hint, there can be a, 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 a touch, there can be a, a sense, if you would, of, uh, of racism literally in all of us. And, and, it's, and it's, it's, it's a byproduct of sin. It's the byproduct of Adam's disobedience to God. And as a result of that disobedience to God, uh, he would declare that, 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 that uh, uh, man is desperately wicked. That's how God would describe it. And so all of us know the only way that we've been able to overcome those issues of the flesh, uh, whether it's been racism, whether it's been prejudice, whatever it may be, it's only through the help of the Holy Spirit. It's only through the help of God that we've been able to overcome these things. So, so when we talk about reconciliation, we're talking about doing something or getting someone to see something that's, that's not a desirable situation. And racism is not a desirable situation. Murder is not a desirable uh, situ situation. Brutality, it's not a desirable situation. Hostility is not a desirable situation. So, so God would say, or the, the, just from a human level, is to cause a person to accept or to be resigned to something not desired. So we talked about the importance of conversations and the like. Is saying, we're saying that this is something that's not desirable. So how can, we, how can we live harmoniously? How can we come to a point of agreement uh, on, on an issue that is so blatantly, uh, that so blatantly, if you will, I'm going to just say it this way, violates the word of God. And watch this, just violates what it means to be a human being. So uh, that, is, that is one definition. It can, it can be to cause to become friendly, uh, or peaceable again. And anytime again, you remember, you know, we, we've talked about that before. Anytime you see that prefix R-E on any word, it's, it's literally saying to do it what? Again. So when we use the word remind, it's to mind again. When we talk about rejoice, it's to have joy again. And so conciliation would be that there's the, 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 it's the issue of harmony, there's the issue of peace, there's the issue of, of, of coming together. But when reconciliation is necessary, that means that there's been a division, there's been a divide, there's been this harmony that has taken place. And of course, you know, I think I said it on Sunday, um, we refer to this as the United States of America, but in very real sense, we are more the divided states. Uh, of America than we are the United States of America. So what we are saying, or what, what is being proposed, and again, even myself, what we're proposing is that there needs to be some reconciliation. There needs to be some conversation. There needs to be some, watch this, reform, uh, meaning things that have been placed as far as the Constitution is concerned for the, if we would, for the, 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 the happiness uh, of all human beings, as as we as we we would read uh, in the in the in the preamble, if you will, but the 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 reality for us is that that has not been the uh, the the main story, if you would, especially those of us who are African Americans. Those watch this, people who uh, 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 are of Asian descent have seen that same thing 
um, in, you know, in the 1940s around, around the World Wars. Uh, in terms of what happened with Pearl Harbor, we know, we know a lot of people uh, who were actually born in America found themselves out of their homes and the like. And that all that happened in the United States of America. And of course, when we think about even the beginning, our, the inception of our nation, uh, when Europeans came over, it was, it was, it was already um, uh, what we would call native Indians living in our country. And so now when, when, when people came or people of, of uh, when Caucasians came from Europe and basically established what, we would call, what, they, what they refer to as America, there were already people who were already living on the land. And so what we say, what we see is that throughout the history, especially of America in particular, that's what we're talking about, this divide has always existed. And so our hope is that as a result of what has taken place, that we move ourselves from rhetoric and we move toward the reality of having some, some real serious discussions about the issue that we're dealing with. But the best place for us to go to know how to deal with it is the Word of God. So how does Paul, in the Word of God, describe uh, reconciliation? Um, because what we do know from a, from a standpoint of what the world is looking for, it happens what at the head level. It happens here in the head, but here is the reality. You can have information in the head, but if the heart doesn't change, sometimes you don't really see change like you would desire to see. So there's another definition that God would give us in his, in his, in his scripture. Uh, when Paul used the word, he was, uh, it, it meant really to be in control by the Holy Spirit. Uh, he included, again, when we talk about the Holy Spirit with us, it includes the intellect of the head. At the same time, it's the, it's, we, we recognize it's his indwelling in our heart. That's the cool thing. That is the cool thing, is it's indwelling in our heart. So thus, uh, what we're talking about is to bring about a change, the word reconciliation, that restores harmony between persons, or more significantly, between human beings and God. The Bible teaches us that while the justice of God must be satisfied, it is, it is human beings who must be reconciled, watch this, brought into harmony with God. Reconciliation is a change of relationship between God and man based on the changed status of humanity through the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. One more time, reconciliation for us is a change of a relationship between God and man because what we're saying is that when we come into the world, the Bible would describe us as being at enmity with God. We don't want God. We don't, we don't desire God. We don't understand God. We don't like God. That's just our human reality. You can read that in Romans chapter 3, uh, verse 9 and following. It helps us to understand that man does not desire God. Uh, so, so, wow, so what now has to happen is that that relationship between God and man is changed, but who has to change? Not God. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13 would tell us uh, Jesus Christ, what is the same yesterday, today, and for. Ever. We talk about the veracity, if you would, of God, that God doesn't change. God, God doesn't change uh, since his existence, since we know of him in time. God has never changed. He has remained the same. And we can count on that. But what has to happen? God has to change us uh, so that we can have his mind, so that we can know again what he desires of us, because ultimately this is his world. And how did he determine that? He did that again through, ultimately, through the redemptive work of his son, uh, Jesus Christ. Many of you have heard this before. Uh, uh, in 19, 1977, I started dating a young lady uh, in August of 1977. And, and for three years, you know, um, I think, you know, just from the standpoint of dating and the like, uh, everybody knew I was going to marry that girl. Even I knew that I was going to marry this woman. I just, I, I knew it. There, was, there wasn't any bit of doubt as far as I was concerned. Um, in, in October of uh, 1980, uh, one afternoon I got a call, and uh, she basically said, "Listen, I found somebody else, and uh, and we can't be together anymore." Oh my goodness! I tell you, that was some kind of day. I never shall forget it. Y'all can tell, right? Uh, uh, but 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 in the event of that, she she dumped me. She dropped me like a hot potato. Told me she ain't want me anymore, right? Uh, but I never I never I never ever forget, never ever will forget that. Uh, this happened like on a Thursday, I think that Saturday, I'm at her house and I'm trying to watch this, to reconcile, watch this. She dropped me, but I'm now trying to reconcile with her, 
y'all get that? She dropped me, but I'm trying to reconcile with her. Guess what? Man dropped, humanity dropped God in the Garden of Eden. But God is the one who went through the process of reconciling, bringing harmony harmony between himself and man. And so it took the one who was who was dropped. It took the one who was um, um, I'm going to even say grieved. It took the one who was actually loving, the one who was kind, the one who was taking care of Adam and Eve. It took him to bring us back into a right relationship with him. That's why you know, when you go to book, go to book of First Corinthians. You got a, you got a, you got a tense situation that's going on in Second Corinthians, right? Uh, because, because there are some folk who are doubting the legitimacy of Paul's apostleship. They doubt in Paul's apostleship, man, because in you know there was this this issue that was going on, and Paul had cr- actually called. Uh, for the church to help a brother. When you read 1 Corinthians chapter 5, the Bible talks about a man who had committed uh, sexual immorality with his father's wife. And, 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 and some would say that there was some in the church who were willing to forgive, others who were not willing to forgive, and then all of those kinds of things took place. And then the, pro- the other problem is that you had other folk, other, other preachers, uh, uh, in the church who were questioning, you know, Paul's validity. And then some believers in Corinth, those whom Paul had preached to, those who had been saved by the gospel that he preached, were actually believing what those jack preachers were saying about Paul. It was not legitimate. It wasn't right. But they were believing that. So ha- what happened now is that you had a division within the church itself where, where that was the necessity for reconciliation to take place. So now, Paul writes to them because he is, he is, he is trying to do this thing in, a, in, a, in just as a more uh, a spiritual way as he can, uh, knowing that he's dealing with people who are not behaving themselves spiritually. There are some people who have now um, 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 changed their minds, they've changed their hearts, and they are hearing what Paul is saying, but there's still a faction within the church of Corinth who still hadn't changed their mind. They still want to hold on to the, the fact that they are questioning, if you will, the legitimacy of Paul's apostleship. Uh, so he, he, he reminds them, in, uh, I love that in, uh, in chap- chapter 4, uh, he reminds them that, that again, he says, we have, we, we, uh, since we have received this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. Uh, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. So Paul is explaining that the ministry that he has, the, the things that he is talking about, things that he is referring to as it relates to the word of God in terms of his apostleship comes from God. It's not, it's not anything um, that he and, and Timothy, and we know it's about Timothy, we look at chapter 1, verse 1, uh, that now they're having to deal with this congregation that is divided. Can you believe it that that was the division in the church? Really? No, man, church people ought to get along all the time. Church people ought not have any problems between us. Wow, we've been filled with the Holy Ghost. We are been bought with the blood of Jesus. But the reality is that we still struggle with the flesh, and then there's always that possibility. So now what we're talking about is as Paul is working through this, he comes to the point that he reminds the church, and I'm going to verse 17 of chapter 5. He reminds the church, therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is what a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Do you believe today that you are a different creature than before you trusted Jesus as your Savior? Do you see yourself as a new creation? Do you see yourself as as a new person, as a new individual. Those things that used to be important are no longer as important as they ought to be. That way you once thought. You don't think that way anymore. That way you used to talk. You don't talk that way anymore. Why? Because if any man is in Christ, he what becomes a new 
creation. It's, it's, it's almost in a sense like God gave us a chance to, for a do-over, a start over. Uh, it started in the garden, and we were innocent. We were, were doing the will of God. But then man decided to rebel against God, act dependent of God. And then what did it ultimately lead to? It led to a division. It led to enmity. But now what God is saying, through Christ, he gives us a do-over. We can start all over again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes the core is over at the, at the house. There's little, little games that, you know, little games that we play. And um, uh, she don't like to lose. She like her daddy and she like her grandfather. She don't like to lose. And so when it does happen, she say, Poppy, let's do it again. Poppy, let's do it again. And every time that it, that it kind of looks like, or every time that I win, whatever that situation may be, uh, she's always saying, let's do it again. Because she, what did she say? I want another chance. Give me another chance. Because I, so what God, what we're saying is that God has what? He's given us another chance. But it comes again through what we, what we recognize that we are new creatures in Christ. So here's what I want you to do. Says some things that I want you to write down. Notice what he says in verse 18. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Here's the first thing I want you to write down. We talk about the fundamentals of reconciliation. Write this down. Reconciliation is the move of God. Reconciliation is the move of God. I'll just say, it's the move of God. Reconciliation is the move of God. God is the one that had to move forward. God is the one that had to introduce to us. God is the one that had to um, uh, change us so that we could be reconciled to him. Why? Because in our sinful nature, we never would have sought God. We never would have understood God. We never would have relied on God. We never would have depended on God. We never would have had faith in God. So God had to change us. Now all things are of God. The all things that he's, again, he's talking about all things that have become new. All things are of God who has done what? Who's reconciled him, us to himself. He's brought us back into a right relationship with himself. He has brought us back into harmony with himself. He has brought us back into a unique state of fellowship. He has done that. But how did he do it? He did it through Jesus Christ. He did it through Jesus Christ. Here's the second thing I need you to write down. Reconciliation is by the means of Jesus Christ. Reconciliation is by means of Jesus Christ. Reconciliation is the move of God. Here's the second thing you're writing down. Reconciliation is by means of Jesus Christ. God chose to bring you and I back together into a right relationship with him through his son. Wow. And of course, you know, when we, when we look at that, when Paul would, would write that, automatically those that he is writing to, they would, they, would already, they would already know. Because remember, these are persons who had already heard the gospel. These are persons who had already heard Paul uh, talk about it in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter, chapter 15. He had already heard, uh, Paul says, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which you also receive and which you stand by, which you also save. You hold fast that which I preach to you unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he came back to life to those who believe in his name. So again, he's reminding us of the essence, if you would, of the gospels or the fundamentals of the gospel. So when he goes back, we'll go back to verse 18, and he says he reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. God brought us back into a right relationship with him through Christ and has and now no, notice what he's done. Because we are new creatures, he has now given us the ministry of reconciliation. He's given us the ministry of bringing people back back into a right relationship with God. Isn't that amazing? So third thing I'm going to ask you to write. You wrote reconciliation is the means, is the move of God. Reconciliation is by the means uh, of Jesus Christ. And here's the third one. Reconciliation is the ministry of Christians. You just say it that way. So reconciliation is the ministry of Christians. God, think about that. Think about that. Is that just, that's, that's wonderful when you think about it, that God has now given you and I the responsibility, the ability to serve others, to bring them into a right relationship with God. 
spoke, that's praiseworthy. That's, that, 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 is, that is praiseworthy. That's, that's like you being on your job and the CEO of the company will call for you uh, to do some kind of special project. He calls for you, he calls for you, you, not anybody else. Call, out of all the people in your, com your company, uh, he calls for you. Or it could be a situation sometimes in your family. It could be your grandmother, your grandfather. They call for you to do a special, some special task or some having some special responsibility that they're given. And just to think that God would use us as new creatures in Christ, God will use us and give us the service of reconciliation. And so that's why I'm saying when I look at what's going on in our world, and I'm, I hear, I'm here to talk about reconciliation and the like, but what I do know beyond the shadow of a doubt, the, the, the persons in the world that God has given the best ability, I'm talking about the ultimate ability to reconcile men to himself, is you and I. Those of us who profess to be Christians, those of us who profess to be followers of Jesus Christ, those of us who have put our faith and our confidence in Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. We have the ministry. Paul would say that when he's saying this, he, he would be referring to, in this case, he would be referring to him and Timothy, but he's also reminding us in the word of God that the same responsibility that he and Timothy had as apostles, if you were the disciples, followers of Christ, a pastor, it would be the same responsibility for every believer. Not the expectation that folk are going to come to us. It ought to be with the expectation that we are going to them. Because that's what Paul did. Paul understood what was going on in the church at Corinth. So Paul is writing to them to reach out to them to say, hey, y'all, God has given this to us. So that's why Timothy and I are saying to you, this disharmony that's there, this division that's there can be repaired because God has given us that ability. And listen, I don't, know, I don't know what husband and wife may be struggling right now. But if you're a Christian, God has given you the ministry of reconciliation. Uh, what parents and children are at odds with each other. But if you are a Christian, God has given you the ministry of reconciliation. Uh, might be some people on, on the job, another believer on your job, a co-worker. Y'all are getting along, but God, you got to know, because you are a new creature in Christ, God has given you the ministry, the service of reconciliation. It's the ability, what, to bring harmony to an otherwise broken situation. Here's the fourth thing God would say to us, verse 19. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing that trespasses to them, and watch this, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation, that God was in Christ reconciling the world. That's what God did. God reconciled the world to himself. John 3, 16, right? For God would so love the world that he did what? That he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. So God reconciled us and he, he, he reconciled the world in Jesus Christ, not imputing, not again, uh, uh, counting, uh, not, not uh, rec reckoning, uh, not charging them uh, with, their, with their sins, but he, what he said, now imputing, not imputing that trespasses to them. Wow. What he's saying, he made a change in them. <laughs> uh, here, here, here we move from being sinners to saints. Here we move from being unbelievers to believers. Here we are being moved from being an enemy of God to being children of God. And so he says that's what God has done for the world, not imputed that trespasses to them and has committed to us what? The word of reconciliation. So here's the second thing, a third, fourth thing you need to write down. Reconciliation is the message of Christians. Reconciliation is the message of Christians. Reconciliation is the message of Christians. Oh, can it, can can, can unbelievers kind of work through it, make it happen? It's possible. It's possible. We, we would hope that reforms would take place. We hope that change would take place. But here's the reality. Only God and his word can change a heart. Ooh, 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 ooh. Those of you, those of you, those of us who know what we were like, 
when we before Christ, how we chose to live. But isn't it something about hearing the word of God? Hearing, hearing the word of God. You know, when I think about that, man, when I think about hearing Emil, Pastor Emil Johnson, uh, when I hear, when I think of hearing Pastor Emil Thomas, when I hear uh, thinking of, of hearing Pastor Anazine Wilson, hearing them preach the gospel and teach uh, the word of God, when I think about as a teenager, as a young man, uh, hearing Brother Wallace Johnson teach the word of God, I often say I, I still would be calling the Holy Spirit it if it weren't for Brother Johnson uh, teaching the word of God. So now what we understand that the ability to bring harmony between God and men, where there's, a, there's, dis, there's no unity, there's a division, there's a divide, that harmony can actually uh, be mended, but it can be mended, what? Through you and I who have the word, we have the message of reconciliation. Yeah. So, you know, so um, there's a lot of things that we talk about. And, and the, the truth of the matter is there's a new conversation that all of us need to have. Uh, if we want to see a difference in our world, if we want to see a difference in, in America, if we want to see a difference in, in Texas, if we want to see a difference in Harris County, in Houston, if we want to see a difference in our community, if we want to see a difference in our neighborhood, if we want to see a difference in our homes, it's going to come with us be willing to have conversation, to have the message and so, yeah, let's, let's use Facebook to give the message. Let's use Instagram to give the message. Let's, let's spend time on Zoom giving the message. Uh, let's, let's use our conference calls to give the message. Let's use our smartphones to give the message because God has given you and I, as new creatures in Christ, he's given us the ability to, uh, to communicate that, that wonderful message and so he says, how do we do that? Verse, verse 10, 20. We're ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading to us. And again, we, we you, know, you know what an ambassador is. An ambassador is a person who, who, is a, who is a citizen of another country, but he goes to another country representing the country that he is from. And everywhere that he, that he or she lives, as far as an ambassador is concerned, everywhere that they live, they live representative of the country that they come from. Whoo! Bible tells us that we are citizens of heaven. So we understand now we represent heaven. We represent Christ. We represent God. We represent Jesus. We are ambassadors of Christ or for Christ. And he says it is as though. God, watch this, as though God were pleading through us. God is using us. God gives us the message. God uses our voice. God uses our hands. Uh, God uses our ability to write. God uses our ability to read. God uses our ability to manage technology. God uses our ability to, commun to communicate. And what, do you want us, what does he want us to communicate? We employ you. On Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Wow, I, uh, I recognize right now I need to, uh, to re-engage in conversation with, with Caucasian brothers and sisters. Uh, I have missed that uh, since, uh, wow, it's been, it's been a few years now, to be honest, since uh, my CBS DTS days. I had a, had a regular opportunity to engage. Uh, you know, with uh, with, uh, with with white people, uh, with bright brothers and sisters, but I'm not doing that anymore. But I recognize if reconciliation is going to take place within the church, I have to be willing to sacrifice time. I got to be willing to sacrifice even maybe a resource and actually take the time to invite somebody who is different color than I am to go to dinner for us to have a conversation because God has given us, us the message of reconciliation. He's given us the ministry of reconciliation, not with the expectation necessarily that they will come to me. He is saying like God did, I will go to them because I recognize that they're, 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 there's a way that they view things, there's a way that they see things that are different than the way I see it, even from the standpoint of looking at scripture. So, so I just want to encourage us to get engaged, 
to get engaged. Uh, there's a lot that's going to come down the pike that we're going to be hearing. We got to re-engage if there's going to be reconciliation, if there's going to be harmony, if there's going to be, listen, God is not calling us, not God is not calling us, and I want to thank my, my friend, Pastor Jerry, Jerry Martin, who said something uh, the other day. God is not calling us to change Houston. No, no, no. He's calling us to, what, to change where we can change, what we can change, where we can change it. We can change things in our home. We can change things in our neighborhood. But we got to be willing to do what? To be engaged in order to do it. And we're going to talk about some things a little bit more as we, as we go through this whole process, dealing with reconciliation, dealing with, again, reform. We're going to talk about that even further as we go along. And here's the final thing. Um, reconciliation is the motivation of Christians. Reconciliation is the motivation of Christians. Reconciliation is the motivation of Christians. Why, somebody's saying it, somebody's saying it already, why should I want to reconcile? Why should I want to bring harmony? Why should I go out of my way to bring harmony with folk that have oppressed my people for 400 years? Why should I make the effort to do that? I'm, I, hey, I'm not the one who's doing any of that crazy stuff that they're doing. I'm not the one, I'm not the one who, who's got the power and the, I got the law and I, you know, I've, I, I'm not the one with privilege. I'm not the one, so why should I be the one go to them? Here's the motivation. And you all have heard me say this. This is by far, whew, my favorite, I call it my favorite verse in the Bible. Why? Notice what it says in verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin, sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Why should I reach out to people who have hurt my people? Why should I reach out to people who don't care anything about me? Because God reached out to you when you cared nothing about him. He reached out. And how did he reach out? He reached out by giving his only son. Wow. That ought to be our motivation. If that's enough to think that God would reach out to me by allowing his son to become sin? You ever thought about that? Jesus became what God hated. Jesus became what God despised. Jesus became what grieved God. Jesus became what was totally opposite of God. He became sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. That's my motivation. Why should I reconcile with white people? Because God reconciled me to himself when I was a sinner when I was, when I was not concerned about anything about God when I was doing my own thing when I was having my own way that's my motivation it's not about whether they do it it's about whether I do it and the greater concern is what are we going to do forward going forward uh, to be in a position to be willing if you will as believers to, uh, to reconcile with one another again we said it that reconciliation is a change of relationship between God and man. Aren't you glad about your change of relationship? That you are not a new creature in Christ? Based on what? The change of status of humanity that no longer sinner, now saint, through the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That's our motivation. That's why we do what we do. That's why we're going to be doing the things that we're going to be doing going forward. That's why, that's why um, uh, we have to make up our minds that if there is going to be a difference, we got to be willing to be change agents because God has given us that ability to do so. Father, how we love you again, and thank you so much just for the reality of Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the fundamentals of reconciliation, knowing whew, that at one point we were not... We were not in harmony with you. 
the word will remind us we didn't even want you. We didn't want, we didn't understand you. We were doing like Adam and Eve. We were going away from you. You described that in Romans chapter 3 very explicitly. So thank you, God, for reconciling us back to a right relationship with you. And help us to know. Help us to know. Help us, help us to know. Help us to work through our anger. Help us to work through our, our wrath. Uh, help us to work through our, sometimes our own prejudice. Help us to work through our own racism. Because you've made us new creatures in Christ. So help us to be agents of change to the end that the glory, the honor, and the praise will be yours. We ask this in Jesus' name and his name alone we pray. And all who agree and say it, amen. Listen, I want to encourage you all, uh, just, as I said, going forward to uh, keep in mind uh, that as a, as a church we are in the process, we did say, of, uh, I'm sorry, let me, we've made a conclusion about the reopening and uh, right after we get done with this particular message, that's going to be a message that's going to come on, come on a little bit later on. I want to explain to you what the decision was made on the behalf of uh, the elders, uh, the deacons of uh, the Good Shepherd Church, concerned about your welfare, uh, the decision that was made as far as it relates to the reopening of our, uh, our uh, building, if you will, for the purpose of worship. So until we meet again, love each other. Stay engaged with the studies. Don't forget, uh, we're going to give you a schedule for the children's studies, for the youth studies, for Sunday school, all of that kind of thing. We're going to give you schedules in terms of what we're doing uh, as we're going to continue to, uh, to go forward uh, in this process. Until we meet again, God love you. God bless you. For those, again, not members of the church that are listening in, thank you all so much uh, for tuning in uh, for those hours that you do on this Wednesday. God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye.